Hello and welcome to today's League of Legends Roundup for July 1st, where we cover the LPL and the LCK in this first part of the video. The second part will come out later this evening for me, um, covering the LEC. So if you haven't watched these videos before, I take the notes on the games, save me the time in the instance you didn't get up at 4 in the morning to watch EDG versus Thunder Talk. I'm starting with the LPL because all four of my teams are in the top, all four of these teams are in my top 25 power rankings that came out yesterday. Um, going into this, EDG versus Thunder Talk, people might say, why is Thunder Talk ranked 16th when they're 1-3 and three and then they lost in, in this series, they're 1-4? and four. Well, their schedule, I believe, has consisted of JDG, Top, LNG, Team Wii, and now EDG. And uh, maybe the loss to LNG is a question mark, I guess, if you want to be like with the top dogs. But they beat Team Wii and they lost to three top five teams in my power rankings right now. So, can't really punish them for that, especially when their stats, they're actually looking good stats-wise. In this series, they looked good um, for extended periods of time. So, game one, they would get out to an early lead. Uh, they'd go top lane and get a kill. EDG would respond by taking a mountain and bot. At 13 minutes, we'd have our next set of action where EDG would take an Infernal, Thunder Talk winning the fight 2-1 afterwards. Laning phase would end a minute later, TT up 3-1, 1K gold. Uh, Thunder Talk would then get a pick at 17 minutes, take a cloud at 18 minutes. However, EDG would punish them 5-2 on the turn after. Puff had both kills for Thunder Talk. TT then get a pick at 24 minutes, EDG go to Cloud Soul point one zero. Uh, Thunder Talk after EDG go to Cloud Soul Point. Thunder Talk are up 7 6. EDG are up 1.5k gold. Puff is 3 0 oh, 3 on the Senna. And Flandre is 3 1 and 2 on a uh, NAR for EDG. Uh, EDG then will get a kill bot lane. At 28 minutes, they want to fight 2 0 to secure Cloud Soul. And then they end at 32 minutes winning a fight in mid 4 0 Viper with a triple kill. Final score 13 to 7. So Thunder Talk stuck with him for a while in the early game. Game 2, very similar. Thunder Talk would stack two Drakes before we had First Blood, where they would get a kill at 12 minutes, and at 15 minutes, laning phase ended. Thunder Talk with the only kill, Gold's tied, and they have two Drakes. At 17 minutes, EDG would get a pick to take a Hextech. Thunder Talk would then take two trips bot lane over the next three minutes. At 23 minutes, EDG would take another Hextech. Thunder Talk winning a fight 2-0 after, which allowed them to take the Baron on the turn, giving Thunder Talk Baron in a 3k lead at 23 minutes. However, at the next Drake fight at 28 minutes, EDG would win 3-1, going to Hextech Soul Point. This led to a Pryo over Baron, got a kill, took the Baron, and now EDG have a 1k gold lead at 31 minutes. So they're sticking with the defending world champions for quite a while. Um, at this point, Thunder Talk are up 6-5 in kills. Zhao Zhang is 3-1-1 one, and one in top. Viper is 1-0-4. Oh, in Game 1, Thunder Talk gave Hoya... I believe it's Hoya's first game of the split um, from Dom Juan game, well, Dom Juan Kia. Uh, he is now on Thunder Talk, and in game one he played Gragas, and Zhao Zhang got to play game two. So Zhao Zhang's 3-1-1 one, one on the Cal, Viper 1-0-4 oh, on the Jinx. And at 33 minutes, EDG would steal the Drake, steal the Hextech to take Soul, winning a fight 5-0, Flandre and Viper both getting doubles. Final score 10 to 6. I felt Scout was MVP, and you're going to say, well, you didn't mention him at all. Well, in game one, his Ari was okay. It wasn't overly great. But in game two, I thought his Corky packages were very good. I thought he set up plays well. He dealt a lot of damage and did what he had to do in these key team fights around the Drakes to be able to secure objectives. Um, really, EDG, Flandre showed up in game two, not really there in game one. I mean, Flandre was there in game one, not really in game two until the end. Viper was kind of in both, but really, um, I felt like Scout was dealing more damage than Viper was. Series two, Anyone's Legend and Victory 5. Victory 5 still with uh, Dream in mid. And uh, this was a great series. Three games, and the final score of the game, game three is 20-17. to 17. I mean, Anyone's Legend is a lot better than I think anyone could have expected going into this split, especially me. I didn't have any idea that there would be decent even to this point um anyone's legend would open up game one getting out to an early lead they would take two trips bot lane in the first six minutes which gave them prio to take an ocean they would then go top lane and bot lane again take a cloud and at 15 minutes 
laning phase was over and anyone's legend were up 4-0 in 2k gold so they had taken three trips bot and a trip top secured two drakes by 15 minutes anyone's legend would then go to infernal soul point at 18 minutes winning a fight 4-1 forge with a double on swain victory five then get a pick at 22 minutes anyone's legend would take the baron uh zdz was able to outplay a uh, attempt by victory five to gank bot lane and because they sent those guys bot lane um anyone's legend said fine we have four guys around the baron we're just going to take baron um however they were forced off of it once one for one victory five would then get a kill and then they'd be forced off it again but eventually anyone's legend comes away with the baron in a 4k gold lead when they have this they're up 10 5 in kills zhao hao is 3 1 and 4 on the diana with the Baron, anyone's legend would take Infernal Soul 4-0, ZDZ with the triple on Gangplank. After Baron was over, Betty would get a double kill in mid. Victory 5 would defend their base at 25 minutes. At 27 minutes, there was a trade of kills um, separately, one for one. 30 minutes, anyone's legend takes their second Baron, giving them a 6.5k gold lead, and they would end with the Baron winning a fight in the river 5-0. Betty with the triple kill on the Callista. Final score of game one was 22 to 7. Um, just anyone's legends playing great League of Legends right now, without a, without a doubt. One second, I'm about to touch the mic. Hopefully that makes it better. It might not have made any difference at all. Um, game two, victory five go mid. Anyone's legend take a cloud. Victory five go mid again, and laning phase ends at 11 minutes with victory five up 2-0 and 3k gold. Victory 5 then take a hex tech, they get a kill top. Anyone's legend gets two kills bot at 18 minutes. Victory 5 take an infernal. At 20 minutes, Rich would solo kill ZDZ. Rich on a Nar, ZDZ on a Kale. Um, at this point, Victory 5 were only up 4 2 in kills, so the, really there weren't a lot of kills between 8 and uh, 21 minutes. However, gold lead had been doubled. Uh, Victory 5 were now up 6.5k gold. 21 minutes, Victory 5 won a fight in mid 4-1. Carso with a double on Lee Sin. They would then get a couple kills top, which allowed them to take a Baron and give them an 11k gold lead at 23 minutes. They would use that Baron to go to uh, Infernal Soul Point. Anyone's Legend would get a kill beforehand, but um, Victory 5 still took it and then would win a fight after 4-2. Photic with a triple. Photic ends up being MVP. Played very well in these team fights in the latter stages of both of their wins. Um, game two being on the uh, Callista. And then they would end at 27 minutes. Victory 5 4 1. Photic with another triple. Final score 19 to 7 of game two. Now, uh, game three. Victory 5 open it up by getting a kill bot lane at five minutes and then get a little overzealous and try and push the envelope and dive bot at six minutes like they Carson didn't leave. And that second dive would go two for two. Carson getting both kills for Victory 5. But nonetheless failing the dive anyone's legend takes an infernal in response then al would dive bot get a pick get a kill top lane in the next couple minutes so they really responded well um victory five take a mountain when anyone's legends top lane at 14 minutes v5 break the game open winning a fight in bot 5-1 um dream with a triple on silas carissa with a double on lee sin this would put victory five up eight six and 3k gold when they take the first turret at 15 minutes at 18 minutes, Victory 5 take a Hextech Drake, winning a fight 5-1, Dream with a double on the Silas. However, at 20 minutes, Anyone's Legend would respond, winning a fight 4-1 in the river, Betty with a triple to secure Baron, and cutting the gold deficit to 3k. So Anyone's Legend are in a nice spot here. Um, Victory 5 are up 14-11 in kills at this time. Dream is 7-3-4, and, and Betty is 5-3-3. And, and at 23 minutes, Anyone's Legend will win another team fight in the river, um... 4-0, Betty with another triple. However, Carissa would defend the base, being the only guy left, one for one, to cause a reset. Victory 5 would go to Hextech Soul Point during the reset, um, which was what the fight in the river in the first place was about, but anyone's legend couldn't end. Um, and then at 29 minutes, Victory 5 won the final fight of the series, 5-1 in the river, Photic with a quadra. So Photic winning the big fight at the end when it mattered most. I believe he had like seven or eight kills, so it's not like he was non-existent. Um, on the Zeri. Final score 20 to 17. A very good game three. Anyone's legend are looking good. Victory five. You know, they this would be considered a speed bump. Um, but they're still very, very good. Without a shadow of a doubt. They're they're very 
I mean, this is a team that doesn't, this isn't even their starting lineup. I mean, Dream deserves a look somewhere. They're talking about it today, and I've been saying it, like, the way Dream's playing, he deserves to be on an LPL roster in 2023. I mean, if the other teams aren't willing to spend money to go buy him out and get him, then they're not serious about winning as far as I'm concerned. So that's it for the LPL. Now on to the LCK. Okay, now for the LCK, three of these four teams were my top 25 as well. So KT and Damwon, um, game one, KT would start it off by taking a cloud and getting a 2v2 kill and taking a mountain in the early game. Uh, Rascal would then solo kill uh, Nugri in top, Rascal on an Orn, Nugri on a Nar. They would then end it one for one. KT were up 2-1 and 1.5k gold when laning phase ended. At 17 minutes, Damwon would take an Ocean, winning a big fight 5-3, uh, Showmaker with a triple on Lissandra. That was a very big moment in this game because really KT were cruising. Aiming played a very good series regardless of the result. Um, at 20 minutes, uh, DK would steal the Baron. Uh, KT trying to force it. Damwon steal it. 5-0. Um, Kellen with a double kill on TK. Giving uh, Damwon a 4.5k gold lead and 11-5 edge and kills. Showmaker was 4-0-6 and, and they had a 6.5k gold lead only one minute later so it i mean immediately after winning um excuse me sorry i had an itch so they steal this baron they get the ace the clean ace which allows them to take all these turrets take all this camp these camps and gain gold and within a minute that power play had already given them 2k gold in addition to the one and a half k they'd already gotten for securing it in the first place they would use the baron to take an ocean they would win a fight in top 2-0 at 25 minutes then they want to fight in the river 3-1 at 27 minutes. Duck down with a double on Ash. And then they would end around the Nexus 3-0. Nugri with a double kill on Nar. Nugri ends up being MVP, but more so for what he did in game two. Um, but nevertheless, Damwon wins game one, 19-6. Now game two, Nugri would set the tone early, solo killing Rascal for what would be the first of three solo kills in the laning phase. Um, he dumpstered Rascal on a Sejuani, which still blows my mind, Sejuani versus Nar. Um, so Nugri solo kills Rascal, and then I believe Cuz tries to go up there, and he gets killed by Owner. So it comes out 2-0. However, at that time, KT would respond in bot lane in the 2v2, getting a double kill for aiming on the Jinx. Then there'd be a trade of solo kills top lane in 9 minutes when um, uh, Nugri dives Rascal under turret. KT then take a cloud. Damwon would take two trips bot lane. At 12 minutes, Nugri would solo kill Rascal again. At 14 minutes, KT get a pick. Damwon get, take a hex tech. At 16 minutes, there would be two skirmishes that happened separately. Damwon coming out ahead 3-0. Canyon with two of the three kills on the Viego. Laning phase ends at 17 minutes. DK up 9-4. 3k gold. Canyon is 5-0-0. At 18 minutes, KT would win a fight in top 2-0, aiming with both kills. Damwon would then get a fight in the jungle 2-1 a minute later. At 21 minutes, DK would take the Infernal 3-1. By doing that, they were able to get Pryo over Baron. They win that fight 1-0, which gives them Baron in a 4K lead. So between um, 17 and 23 minutes, Damwon, because they hit these speed bumps, giving away a couple kills to aiming and things like that, the gold lead hadn't really been extended by that much, but this Baron would take it to another level. So Damwon got a pick with the Baron. That would lead to Infernal Soul Point. They get another pick after it expires. At 30 minutes, Damwon are up 17-8 in kills. 6k gold. Canyon is 7-2-4. and four. They then go to take the Infernal Soul. 33 minutes, they get a pick. Take their second Baron, giving them a 7k lead. And then they end shortly after the Baron expires. Winning a fight 5-2. Duck down with a extended Penta. It wasn't a real Penta. They won a fight 3-0, and then he got a couple picks, and it all was timed out, but he had all five kills on the Zeri. Final score, 22-10 of um, Game 2. T1 and DRX, both teams coming in at 4-1. I will say T1 definitely struggled in um, Game 1. I did not write down the MVP. Um, Faker was the MVP. So at 4 minutes, DRX end up going bot lane and getting a kill. Then Deft would get a double kill at 6 minutes. DRX take a hex tech with all this prio and bot. Zayas would solo kill Kingen in top. Zayas on a Gwen and Kingen on, a, on um, Nar. 
DRX then get a kill mid, T1 take a cloud, there'd be a skirmish in mid at 12 minutes, one for one. DRX take an infernal, and at 17 minutes, laning phase ends, DRX up 5 2 in kills, 2.5k gold. Pioshik is 2 0 oh, 3 on a Hecarim, so he, he had a Hecarim sighting today. Um, T1 then get a kill bot lane, there'd be a reset where DRX would go to uh, infernal soul point. At 28 minutes, T1 would steal the infernal, prevent soul from going over. Uh, DRX win the fight afterwards 2-0. Um, because DRX won this fight 2-0, they went over to Baron and would take it. T1 got to the Baron late and would win the fight 4-0 afterwards. Faker with a double kill and um, limiting the potential of that Baron. There was only one Baron buff left and D, uh, DRX had a 2k lead. After the Baron would expire, T1 would go to Infernal Soul Point, winning a fight 3-1. Faker with another double. He was on the Corky. His packages were on point. Ends up being MVP because at this point, when they end up fighting at Baron, DRX are running away with this game. And I feel like if he doesn't do that, they lose game one. Now, what happens in game two, we don't know, right? But I feel like that turned the tides of the series. Um... T1 are up 10-8 in kills, and gold is close after this fight around Infernal. They then take a Baron after winning a fight 2-1 at 35 minutes, giving them a slight 2.5k gold lead, and they would end with the Baron 5-1 in the river, Gumiyushi with a triple on Senna. Game 2, T1 would open it up by getting a kill bot lane at 5 minutes. There would be a reset where DRX would take a mountain. Uh, DRX is 2v2, gets another kill uh, in the 2v2 bot lane at 8 minutes. T1 get a kill top, they take a cloud. At 15 minutes, DRX end up taking a Rift Herald. T1 punishing them 4 0. Owner with a triple on Lee Sin in response. Sorry, on Diego in response. He played Lee Sin in game one. So at 16 minutes, T1 are up 6 1 in kills, 2.5k gold, and Owner is 3 0 oh, 3. T1 then would take a Hextech. Uh, they get a kill top lane, they go to Hextech Soul Point. They get a kill bot lane. Really, in the mid to late game, not a lot really happened. I mean, so we get the Rift Herald fight at 15 minutes. The next kill comes, like I said, T1 getting a kill top lane at 21 minutes. Then we wait till 27 minutes when T1 get a kill in bot. Um, 28 minutes, T1 end up winning the game, pretty much. Um, winning a fight around Seoul. 5-1, uh, Zayas with a triple on Fiora. Caria with a double on Seraphine. They would then get a fight around the Nexus 3-0 carrier with another double kill. Final score 16-2. They demolished the hell out of DRX. Um, I, Faker ends up being MVP because, I mean, just from an outsider without knowing the mental, I'm going to have to say that he probably took a lot of the, um, you know, wind out of the sails of DRX in game one. But, you know, clean series out of both of these teams, Damwon and T1. Moving on to their next games, comment down below with the opinions you have on the LPL and LCK from today. Like the video if you like it, subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content, stay tuned later today, hit the notification bell so you get notified when I do post my LEC roundup, as well as a sneak peek for tomorrow's games in the LPL, LCK, and LEC, and there will be a separate video for the LCS because this week... Because my sneak peek videos have struggled to get out Saturday nights due to the LCS going so late. I'm going to do all the LCS games for the entire weekend in one video. Which kind of makes it tougher to predict what happens Sunday because you don't know how teams will play Saturday. You can separate your predictions if you want to which I'm going to go over in that, in that um, video. Sorry about the camera just moving. The cat moved the damn, the damn light. But nevertheless, thank you for watching and I hope you come back for more content.